Welcome to this football special with me, Peter Martin. Delighted to have your company. And our special guest on the programme is none other than former Celtic and Scotland defender, Jackie McNamara. I'm saying defender, but I know you've played more than a few uh, positions over and above that, Jackie. Great to have you on the programme. Yeah. Um, the first picture, I think, uh, takes you back to Dunfermline. Um, how much of a great grounding was it there for you getting ready to get a big move? Um, yeah, it's an old picture, yeah. Actually, I'm actually older than what you probably think. I'm about 20 in that picture. Uh, Grounding-wise, it was brilliant. You know, I had some great um, coaches and managers down to earth and players, senior players that I, I played under. You know, with uh, guys like Paul Smith, Moisey, Billy Davis, you know, um, guys uh, obviously done really well in the game and management as well. How do you handle it as a youngster when you know there's a buzz, you know there's interest in you? Um, it's difficult, I'm not be honest. It's, it's to say that it's, when you, to come to, you, you think you've got a, a chance of moving to a big club and how, how to deal with that. Um, fortunately, obviously, uh, my father was a player, I could bounce off of him, but you still have you still have that side that I could be playing at Celtic Park tomorrow and I mean, obviously I knew there was interest and I had a first bid rejected. So. Um, it is it's difficult to, to, to deal with. Yeah, 600,000 sounds like pennies now, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, yeah. I think like there's more than that, actually. Oh, was it more? <laughs> <laughs> it was 650 plus 50 from my first cap with Scotland, so that's that's what I get told anyway. Yeah, it's not a bad deal, actually. And and, and the man that signed you, um, was there an even greater incentive for you when you knew it was Celtic, it was Tommy Burns? Yeah, yeah, it was just fantastic. Um, Fantastic man, fantastic manager, and learned so much from him. He was uh, very passionate, um, everything to the best. Every day, he was, his standards were so high. But a really top human being as well, and I think he helped me so much on and off the park. Yeah, uh, uh, were you aware at that time that obviously Tommy's going to sell you the vision? Not too hard to sell, yeah. to be honest with you. Um, but were you aware at that time that he was trying to build something against an incredible force in Rangers? Yeah, right away, I think, when I came in, because I'd, I'd signed that day, and obviously we, we came up um, in the main stand, my dad, myself and Tommy, and he's shown us around the, the obviously it's around the stadium, but it was the main stand, and uh, it was just across the other side, I think it's, the capacity was about 32 then, maybe, 33, and he's saying this is going to be all full, it'll be 60,000, and obviously you could see what was, what was going to happen to the club, um, and playing that night and seeing how he wanted to play and the style he wanted to play and his beliefs and what was the right way to do things and you know and I totally believe in everything he said and, and taught me and you know, see, I was fortunate enough to have a, a go at management myself and tried to, to bring a lot of things from Tommy from that. How much of an influence was your dad on you as a as a person and as a player? Yeah big I think more as, as a person I think my dad's you know as a player he would he wouldn't really go into detail with games or say things after games. He just kind of let me get on with it, um, you know. And it was more how to deal with certain people. You know, it was very very protective. Um, I think I think he found it difficult getting into management. You know, when it's different when you're playing, you can do something about it. The management you're, you're relying on other players to, to 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 do their jobs properly. Yeah, and of course, uh, I mean. Uh, I'm fortunate enough that I remember him playing in a Celtic strip and he had a good career, a really good <coughs> career at Hibs. Was there, a, was there a moment as a youngster going in, you're thinking people are actually measuring the two of you up? Yeah, yeah, I think, well, I obviously grew up, it was mostly at Hibs when I see my dad and I think like, like any kid, you think your dad's the best player in the world. Yeah, Hibs fans used to sing his name and, and, and obviously that's something I always wanted to have, but obviously you can't sing two McNamara's. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I always, always wanted to, to have that buzz of going out there and playing and enjoying it. And, you know, and that was, my dad was, was happy when he was playing football and he wasn't injured. Uh, he'll kill you for that, let me <laughs> tell you. Uh, you know that um, building uh, a team, the end result has to be trying to win trophies. Tommy tried desperately to do that um, over a period of time. Scottish Cup is one thing, but the league title w was the be-all and end-all. But I'm sure even Tommy and the players that, that he put together will look back on a period where many a Celtic fan would suggest that the football they were playing, especially you alongside Simon Donnelly, there was great links in that Celtic side at the time. Yeah. I think he he brought some fantastic players to the club, you know, Van Hoydonks, Andy Toms, 
I lied with the, the lads that were there, like Mick Stay was, you know, just coming to, to near the end of his career. So for me coming into that, and I settled in right away. I played that game at Falkirk, my debut that night, um, and it let me get into the, into the team and, and stay in the team. You know, I think Tommy was surprised by um, how quickly I adapted to, to that, but. To be honest, I never, I never really thought about it. I just kind of got on with it. Um, but the football we played was, was was no surprise to us because we worked on it. We worked on it in training, and we took it into the match on the, on the Saturday. Yeah. What were the guys like then? I mean, were there a few? I mean, I I know a few stories of some of the individuals, but what were they like actually mixing with them? Uh, I the different characters, and you know, like coming from Dunfermline and dealing with, with, with characters in the game. Paul, I say, probably was. You know, the one you look up to the most at the time. He's quiet, but he led the game by example. He could control the match. Granty, he was more a, the, you know, a laugh and a joke and point at. The reason just point in the dress and on the pitch, but he would point in the dressing room and laugh and stuff at people. You know, the first morning I came in and had little Power Rangers on my my, my my space in the morning, and you know, I thought it was a young kid. Um, but no, some good characters, and you had to find hoy donks to can you when you came as well, which was an experience to him every morning. Well, I was going to say to you, I mean, you get to a situation where you're dealing with people who you've grown up with who may well have, uh, you know, the, the same cultural background as you. Suddenly you've got a, a George Cadet, a Van Hoydonk, a De Canio, and all three of them had something that wee bit special. They did, they did. Um and I think until you actually play with them and see and you see them every day in training and you, and you see them in the matches, how the the qualities that they have. And I think, to be honest, I think that took us with them. You know, in terms of the quality, when you're playing with better players, it makes you better. Um, you know, you know if you got the ball in the right back area, if Simon wasn't on, I could just put him in the corner, to, uh, big Pierre's feet, and it would stick. Um, or a free kick in front of goal. You know, it was in the back of the net. Um, the, the ability these guys had was just incredible. I know you like a laugh. I, I always <laughs> feel as if you were you, somebody who liked to laugh but was level-headed. <laughs> what was the Canio like? Did you ever sit in the dressing room and think, really? <laughs> ah, he was crazy. He was crazy. He'd come up every morning. He's uh, just got to the mirror and his gear, which we thought was horrendous, but he <laughs> thought it was great. Um, but he was just... But I have to say, he was, when he was trained, he was... You know, he was he was serious and he trained, he gave everything he had in the matches, he gave everything, I'll say that about him. When we were off the training field, he was a laugh and a joke and, um, you know, a bit of a poser, but on, on, the, on the training field in the matches, he was probably one of the hardest trainers. Yeah, from Tommy Burns, tell me your perceptions of Vim Janssen. Uh, Vim came over to, to Holland and everything, it was just a different, different thing altogether. You didn't, with Tommy, you knew where you stood the training session, where you stood, you made a bad pass in training, it'd be on you, Vim. Even in the matches, you wouldn't, you know. He was very um, guarded with everything he gave out, information. So he was always testing people. You know, there's times there on the Friday, he would he would put a team out against another team, which you would think was maybe the starting eleven, but it wasn't. You know, but he was always testing to see a reaction. And I found myself in the team that wasn't, you know, to seem to be the starting of living on Saturday, and and I never really changed um, how I went about it. But other other lads maybe go through it and go, and they throw the, the dummy out. I think they weren't playing the next day, and they would show them that you know their their attitude wasn't right. And he, he was clever. I really liked him. You know, he's calm after matches. He wouldn't go into much detail with the emotion after matches. Wait till the Monday, or you know, just like nothing said. Or, but I mean, we were successful. Um, that season it was a, a massive season for us yeah I was going to say that I mean the season itself I mean what does it mean to be part of that team that stopped 10 in a row it was I mean you look at it now it's um, I think even after the start the first two games you know I don't think anybody would give them a chance losing to Hibs then at home to Dunfermline but the way we turned it around I think the European games helped um, but you hear so many stories throughout that season with, you know obviously what happened to to Darren Jackson and uh, different other things, Tommy Johnson, a bad injury. Um, it kind of, even the, the fight with Henrik, with Tosh, there's a lot of things that kind of brought us all together. We lost the game at Rangers, um, Richard Goff's punch in the air and 10 in a row. So there was so many things that, that brought us, I think the, the turning point was obviously winning the, 
the League Cup as well, that gave us that momentum with the fans. It was my first trophy we won, then went on to to beat them in January, then went on to win the league. But it was it was a tough tough season. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and again, you, you talk about you know people fighting, and that goes on in in training grounds. I mean, what was going through your <laughs> what's going through your head? I know Tosh. I mean, he's one of those guys. He's he's immaculate. He doesn't look as if he's the type of guy to lose the head. But of all people to lose the head with Henrik. I know, uh, one of Celtic's all-time players, but there was there was a wee bit of needle to start. I think because, like I said, with the communication, Vim didn't give a lot away, and so there's some boys maybe felt they were left out, and a few wee tussles happened a couple of times, and that just kind of the day before the fun game as well. It set the tone <laughs> for the rest of the season, but you know it's obviously something back. Tosh will be proud. He wasn't proud of, and he stated that and. But it, it definitely brought the rest of us together. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you picked up on a point. You mentioned the League Cup, but you also mentioned the game. And I think it was a significant game because I can remember being in the press box at the time where there was a sense in that main stand that finally, psychologically, not only was the team good on the park, but psychologically you could take Rangers. I'm talking, of course, about Paul Lambert scores the goal, 2 nothing on the 2nd of January, and the whole place goes crazy. Yeah, it's a great great feeling, that. Um, obviously, even even back to that game, the amount of saves that Andy Gorham had, you know, he'd, he'd so many fantastic saves over the last number of years against us in no firm games, and that game alone he had, Two or three brilliant saves. One cup in the first half. He won the second half. He won from Darren Jackson. I see. Yeah, right. It was a cracker. Yeah, and they went off the post. I think Henry got the post. Um, and obviously, uh, Burley made it one 0 and then uh, Lambo scored a screamer to just to settle the match and win the match. And that psychologically, that was massive for us because had we lost that, it would have been difficult to to call it back. Mainly. Yeah. And the momentum just carried you through, as you as you mentioned. There was a there was a real belief um, in the side. Suddenly, you get to Dunfermline, though. The one guy's name that sticks in my head forever and a day is Craig Falkenbridge. I know, I know. It's, uh, he would have been a lot more famous if we hadn't won the league the week before. Uh, sorry, the week after. Um, yeah, it was. We thought of the, the game. Everybody was everybody was ready to, to celebrate, and you know, he's cut with that loopy header. I still think Goldie should have saved it myself, but. <laughs> 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 but you know, in a in a way, it was it was fitting to to win it back home at Celtic Park, um, you know, in front of your own fans, and it was a special day. Yeah. Well, what were your memories? Was there a nervousness? Uh, you know, because there was that kind of a yes, it was people hoping that you could win it on the day, but there was a, a sense of tension as well. I think the nerves started from the Dunfermline game. To be honest, the the whole week, the build up, because the pressure that was on us was incredible. Henrik scored the first goal and, and settled us all down, but really needed that second. I think Georgia Boyle had a good chance, he hit over the bar, and um, we had a few other chances to score. But as the longer went on, just one little thing could, could change, as obviously I've experienced later on in my career at Celtic. But um, when Harold scored that, you knew that was it. We knew we'd, we'd, uh, we'd won it, and just the, the feeling, um, you know, just there with the fans and celebrating, we knew we'd, we'd won it and stopped at 10. Yeah, he came in like a steam train as well. Harold was one of those guys, um, you know, if he, the ball was ahead of him, there was a good chance it was going in the net. He, he, I don't think he liked the ball with his back to go. No, it wasn't his 40. Um, but he's, I think uh, Harold wasn't your, your normal footballer. You know, he's, he came back, and he's, I think he's a commercial pilot now. Yeah. Um, but a, a really nice lad. You know, a lot of times you'd... Like, what, what, what's happening here? You know, it's the pressure and everything else. But um, it was delighted for him to eventually score the winning goal and uh, just to seal it. Yeah. What was it like th that day and the celebrations afterwards? It was good. Yeah. Um, went back up to the restaurant after it, and we were up uh, in the early hours. And the next day we had to fly to to Lisbon to play Sport in Lisbon for uh, as a game for George Cadet and. Um, I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I, I didn't play in the match. I sat in the, the bus because I was still feeling my knee. Um, and we still celebrated in the, the next few days. Strangely enough, everybody talks about the collective of the team and what they achieved that year. I mean, I, I make no bones about telling you, we found this photograph and I thought, now there is an absolute cracker of you winning the player of the year. Mm. Um, obviously, there's <laughs> the, you've got the kilt and everything, but that must have been the ultimate for you. It was, yeah. It said, I think. You know, you look back, you don't, as a, as a, again, at the time you don't think too much of it, but um, 
you look back in it and obviously the, the, you look at the, the standard of play that was in the league at that point, you know, the Gascoins, Loudrops, Larsons, you know, so many good players. You know, for me it was obviously when I mean, you finish your career, you, you, you kind of look back and obviously really proud of, of what, what I've achieved. Yeah, at that point, I'm looking at Jackie McNamara and thinking, you're a regular in the side. I can remember, I don't know if you can remember this, I can remember doing an interview with you for SDV and you said to me, I'll pick you up. And you picked me up in an old battered Ford Fiesta. Yeah, still got it. <laughs> <laughs> but there, was a, there wasn't the sense, there wasn't a golf, I think. You know, sometimes, there's, you know, teams and earnings and players can become distant. I, I, I very much thought at that point, you were the, the club still had that, yeah. Touch that feeling with the fans as well. They yeah, still absolutely. do, but to still a do. I extent. think it's obviously everything's changed now, and there's pressure out there for the lads to have the best, and you know, everybody looks up to them, they're like movie stars now. It's, it's totally different, but I think we were always grounded, and you know, um, you know, even at, at that point, winning the league, and it, it didn't really change us, it was just doing our jobs. Tough question was that the best? You've played with you at the top of your game there. I know you won the, the, the Player of the Year again, but was that the best period for you? Um, I don't know. It's difficult to say. I mean, I'd played more advanced that season and I kind of feed him on the right-hand side. And, but again, I had to really invent myself with, with him because at the start of the season, I was trying to do what I'd done before and get forward for the full-back and he didn't want his full-backs getting forward. He wanted them to stay in position. So... I found my team, myself at the team, then I got back in, then I played wing back, I scored against Liverpool, but again, I always I enjoyed that season, but I never played that, that position again, Yeah. never played right, right midfield, right wing again for Celtic, even when Dr Joe came in, you know, I had, I had problems after that season, I, that season I played quite a number of games um, through an injury, through my knee injury, and it, it, it came on after the World Cup again, and two operations when Dr Joe came in my knee and I had a real bad time of it. Um, but I'd never played right right wing again or right midfield. You, you talk about reinventing yourself. How difficult was it um, to try and re-establish yourself when Martin O'Neill arrived? It was okay at the start. You know, I was in at the start. I was playing wing back. We beat Rangers 6-2 and a few other games. Um, I was in, in his team every week. Then I get injured away at San Marino with Scotland. And I missed the game on the Saturday and Martin tried Didi Agat in the wing back area. I thought, oh no, I might not get back in there because um, I can't run like him. Um, and I found it difficult to get back in and the team was winning and the momentum. I came in the odd games and done well but, but found myself back out. Um, even the European game, we played away in Ajax. And I played midfield that night and we won 3 1 in Ajax. And I thought I played well and he, you know, he came up to me after the game, you're excellent son, and, and the Saturday after we were playing at home and I wasn't even on the bench. So mentally, you know, I was like, right, you know, I have to deal with this. And then I wait a, a few games to get a game. He put me in uh, defensive midfield in front of Lenny. Um, I guess Dundee United, I scored, I was mad at the match. Next game, I'm not even on the bench again. So I was like, what do I need to do? And I'll go and see him and... I was just being patient and just get my head down rather than spitting the dummy out. Yeah. You know, just trying to, and eventually to win him over again. What was he like to, to chap the door and say, listen, you know, Gaffer, I'm, I'm winning man of the matches here? He wasn't one of the characters. He was quite, I wouldn't say aloof is the right word, but he was, um, when I spoke to him then, he was like, you know, it was up to Robo and Wally because Martin, he didn't go to training every day. Um, he'd come up certain times of training, obviously a Friday before the game would be there, maybe a Tuesday, you know, and so other days he'd, he would come up, and, so they were with you all the time, and they said it was up to Robbo and Wally, you'd be playing every week, and that's what he said to me at the point, he said, look, you're in my plan, son, you, you know, I want you to stay, I don't want you to go anywhere, I said, I just want to play, I don't want to hang around here if I'm not involved, I, you know, I, I was much to love it here, yeah. but I need to play, he went, no, no, you'll, you'll play, you'll play, and I just stayed patient, and I think the it would lost a few old firm games with Rangers playing a four three three system and we'd be playing at the three at the back at that, that point. And it was the first time he changed it um, was after Boa Vista at Ibrox on, this, on the, that Sunday. And he went back to right, put me back to, to full back. Um, and we won, he put me captain. 
and then I found myself back in the team again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you talk about the, the various games that you proved to him. I mean, it doesn't get any better than the Scottish Cup final, you're man of the match against Hibs. Yeah, but as I say, when you, you, you step back for it and you look at it, you, it's obviously, as I say, I've had a short management sale, but he's paid six million for Lenny. Yeah. You know, six million for him. It's, you know, you know there's somebody already been there, so it's, there's, there's so many things come into it, you know, and like, from our point of view, you look at the time, you just think about yourself and your, your career and playing every week. But from the manager's point of view, he's like, well, I need to justify the board. I've just spent six million. I'm going to play him in front of him. You know, why why did you need to do that? Or So for me, it was it was trying to find a position that you hadn't been <laughs> <laughs> a right position. But, um, and obviously a gap came in. You can't argue how he done. Yeah. You know, the team and we got to Seville and... All the rest of it. And Did you feel part of that Seville run? Did you feel yeah, part of the team? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because I'd played a number of games, and you know Stuttgart. I was left centre half. Yeah. Against Stuttgart at home, against Irani, was a lot of games I played. Celta Vigo away, and yeah, I was I was part of it. Yeah. You know, I was. You tr- I, I think the biggest thing is is trust, and he yeah. trusted me to go in. You know, even Liverpool away, I came on. You know, Tell me about that picture because that's the dejection of the final. Um, yeah. You're on, you've played in that game as well. It, gut-wrenching? It was, yeah. It was It was um, disappointing. It was, I think I think because we could see it, it was there for us. You know, I think the turning point, I think everybody would agree, was with Bobo getting sent off. Yeah. You know, I came on for Paul Lambert in the game and Martin asked us to go and try and man Mark Derko at the game, which... I thought I did okay at that to start with, although my first touch I nearly set them up for a goal, <laughs> um, which would have killed my career. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I thought, um, you know, I thought we'd keep my grips with them and we're getting, as a, in, in the system, we'd lost a couple of bad goals, but at that point I thought we were on top and uh, we'll get the slid in and get the second yellow, which again, is difficult enough, then you got an extra time with a man down. And, um, it was uh, disappointing. Is it your biggest regret in football? I say regret. I think it's, it's disappointing. Um, it's it's up there, I because that's that's a that's a life changer. You know, you see the the guys just now. I was up the, the game last week in Clarkey and Clarkey, and see them last year the, the the reunion, fifty years, and it's just incredible what the guys done. You know, and it'd been good for us our own little bit of history. Well, I've got bits of history getting there and the fans and I always remember it, but. You know, it's it is all about winning. Yeah, I, I thought after that though, going into two thousand three, two thousand and four, again, this was Jackie McNamara establishing himself as a regular. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, I think the trust was there with Martin, and as you said, I was the captain that season. Um, you know, it was like a good side. We, we had to have something to prove. We'd, we put so much into the European campaign before getting the final, and, and to lose it the way we did in the last day again. Um, was was disappointing, but I say there's certainly things can trigger things in your career, and that was that was a season that um, that I enjoyed football wise. Yeah, and and of course, uh, yet again, another player of the year. Yeah, the sports players. Yeah, again, there was some great candidates that that year on their team. Uh, big characters as Sutton's Henrik's last season, you know, and for me personally, obviously, for what I've been through the last few years, to to to, to bounce back from that. And uh, be Martin's captain and the team that won that, uh, the league that year. It was just, it was great. Yeah, we all know how the the Celtic career ended. You you should have stayed. Didn't quite work out in the negotiations on it. Um, w- when you look back on it, um, is there a, a tremendous sense of pride? At, first of all, pulling the jersey on and and, and all those great moments that you. Sample. Yeah, I think I think that's the biggest thing. I think when people have their career and go, "Geez, I was there ten years." It's a it's a long time, you know. You're, it's for anybody, and you think of the transition over that that uh, decade um, to be there that long. I had planned to, to try and finish my career there, but obviously, if Martin had stayed, I think I would have been all right. Um, Gordon coming in, it's different dynamics, and everything kind of changed. You know, I'd, I hadn't tried to move anywhere. Obviously, my testimonial people look at that, but mentally, I had prepared myself to try and finish my career there. Um, Gordon and his own players he wanted to bring in, and it, it, it was disappointing the way it finished for me. But there, but I think people that know me and knew I hadn't tried to do it, I tried to finish my career at Celtic. And but you say regrets, it's no regret because it wasn't really my decision really to do that. Yeah. You know, I, 
I had planned to do and spend my, most of my career there and, and loved it. And the last point, probably a fitting one, with the fans in mind, you have a testimonial um, against the Republic of Ireland. So many people, you know, down through the years, Bobby Lennox, a Jimmy Johnson, um, you know, a Paul McStay, a Peter Grant, they've all talked about how indebted they are to Celtic fans who come out to show their appreciation. I mean, what did it mean to you to see them all out there to, to say thank you? Yeah, it was incredible, I think. Even, as I said, with the Scottish Cup final week before, we lost the league to Rangers the week before. Um, but to see that, that many turn out, as you said, that when you're obviously like myself and you look at your career, and you're not sure how you're how you're held with the Celtic fans. You know, you're not a big name, you're not a big signing, you're not the big guy that came from Dunfermline. So, as I said, for me to be there ten years um, and to see the people turn out for you, um, it's just for me it was so so unbelievable and humbling. Yeah, uh, Jackie, it's been an absolute joy uh, having a chat with you. I feel as if I lived every minute of it from the <laughs> minute <laughs> from the minute you signed to the minute you said farewell. Um, uh, great to have uh, Jackie McNamara on this football special. Hopefully, you enjoyed a trip down memory lane through his Celtic years. Thanks for watching. Welcome to PLZ Soccer. Why not join the football family and download the PLZ app? You'll get all the latest Scottish football news and up-to-date news on English and world football. There's also a feature here where you can record yourself talking about your favourite team. If we use the video, you could feature on our football show. For all the latest news in Scottish football, download the PLZ Soccer app in the App Store and in Google Play. Come and join the football family on PLZ Soccer.